<laughs> All right. Should we start? Let's do it. Let's All right. do it. Cool. Welcome back to AMZ Seller Real Talk. I am your host, Danon Coleman. And with me, I have two uh, interesting gentlemen. They're not actually gentlemen. Uh, and they're from Rivoli.com. And we're going to talk about how these two are taking a gap in the are taking over a gap in the market and how us sellers can expand in their businesses with rivley so with me i've got josh good and daniel thompson hello and we're going to talk about some stuff so let's first start out with how we met Good right? start yeah so um i was in tampa at uh the wizards of e-commerce uh meetup and which, if you don't know what that is, go to Wizards of Ecom. Wizards of. Yep. F Wizards look. of Ecommerce. Yep. Dot com. Yep. And good meet up. Uh, yeah, they're great people there, good and, job. and and a really good, really good group of helpful. Big group uh, too. Yeah, really big. Yeah, six thousand so, members almost in their South Florida one. That's yeah, big. The crazy. Tampa one's gonna be growing fast. Yep, yeah. we're already over a hundred and something, and it's only been a few weeks. Right. So. Uh, all right, cool. So that's where we met uh, over cigars and uh, old fashions, I think. Yep. Right? Some Italian food, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. Brio. Yes. Yeah, Brio. <laughs> Yummy. So um, they've got an interesting story. And, and uh, funnily, since that weekend, we've been with each other almost every other weekend since. So first was uh, the Tampa Bay Sellers with Wizards of Ecom. Correct. After that was Sellers. No, no, it was uh, Wizards of Ecom in Miami. Orlando. Oh, that's no, Miami. No, in Miami. I mean, in Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, Miami. yeah. We had that's other right. tacos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and hot sauce. Yeah, yes, yeah. Right. hot sauce that he regretted yeah. later. That yeah, night. I was not feeling we'll hot. We'll get that into night. that too, uh, too much, too much. No, because yeah, no. then we had dinner that night in Miami. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So we we had the opportunity. We drove down there too. Mm -hmm. So we had the opportunity to be with each other. Opportunity or displeasure, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> uh, for eight hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> for eight hours, and in, in that time, they told me all about their story and and how Rivley got started and. And then we even kind of uh, brain melded in terms of some services and, and opportunities right. for people. And brainstorms are good ideas for the platform yeah, itself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then the following week, you and I go to ASG TG together. No, no that Summit. was Seller Summit. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Excuse me. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah. So this is stayed at a five star resort. <laughs> <laughs> It was five stars uh, out of <laughs> out of fifteen. <laughs> so uh, yeah, how many? Let's see. The, he had a hotel room. I had a hotel room, and, and then we had a hotel room. And then we had a hotel room. <laughs> That's right. So uh, there was nothing wrong with mine, but his had two bed, three beds in it, in two different rooms. So I was like, hey, save the money. I went over to his room, That's but his roll room was really right. like suites only. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. a cash drop startup. Very pragmatic with our That's spending, right. absolutely. Uh, right, yep. right. If VCs listening out there, don't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then the next weekend uh, was ASGTG, but I went somewhere else and- Greece. Yes. Yep. I heard a teaser. Let's hear about it. Let's hear about it. I know you got so, a story, Dan. First of all, how was ASGTG? It was great. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Food was great. Yep. People food, were great. Food was probably yeah, the food highlight was, of the food event. Food was phenomenal. Yeah. And there was the pre-event Yankees game. Oh, yeah. They couldn't have finished even better. You've met him. He throws on a tremendous event. That's his event up there. Ed Rosenberg, that time. community is awesome. They did, yeah, they did a great job. we got to meet him for the first time. Uh, yep. Tremendous community. Um, I actually got to go to a Shabbat dinner. Um, somebody invited yep. me to that. That was really cool. So yep. my wife and I stuck around. You stayed around. extra night for that. Yeah. Yeah. So I stayed actually till Sunday. Um. Got to go to that. It was a tremendous experience. Uh, you wake up or you wake up, look up. It's two o'clock in the morning. And you're still sitting at the table having conversation. Yep. You know, it was. Yep. They did a good job too because the ecom cooperative was up there as well. Yep. You know, so they timed oh, it yeah. perfectly. Yep. You know, we had their pre of the Yankees game. Went into great meals, a full day of events. You know, Ed, I'm sure whether you would only have seven or eight spots, you pick great speakers. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we went to the ecom cooperative dinner in Jersey the night, the night after as well yep. in the warehouse. They did a great job. It yep. was yeah. uh, definitely worth going to. Yeah, and I was at the Ecom Cooperative uh, dinner uh, in Miami before Amazon Pow Wow. That was, man, we closed, first of all, they closed the whole restaurant for us, right? That's awesome. And we 
there must have been like double the amount of people that were supposed to be there. And, and like they were spilled out in the parking lot. We were smoking cigars out there. And <laughs> I mean, it was, it was an awesome time. So uh, Daniel Dan, he puts on a heck of a show. That's for sure. Uh, and, and, of course, your crew, Daniel. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And then, so that, I went to Greece. You went to Greece. That's yeah, right. that's right. So I went for an e-commerce thing. And uh, yeah, how'd that go for you? Well, how many Amazon stars were there, Tina? Uh, there was somewhere between zero and one. Um, <laughs> actually, there's definitely you. one. Yeah, I, I'm an Amazon seller, so yeah, I did not. I did not meet a single Amazon I seller, and I wouldn't have expected that at all. Amazon has such yeah. a huge presence everywhere. Yeah, but I guess not. No, and I knew there wasn't one in Greece, but this was supposed to be a European e-commerce right. group, and and so I I was under the impression that there would be somewhere between five and ten percent that were Amazon sellers. I couldn't find a single one. It was a lot of service providers, yeah, specific lots, to that region. Yeah, specific to Greece, and basically it's Greece and Bulgaria, um, and and most of them only served Greece, and they were mostly um, agencies, so web and marketing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with Amazon, right? So, but that's not what you were asking about, yeah. was it? You want to hear my story of how how uh, Danon was uh, duped into his first yes. hustle? Yes. Yeah. Your first Listen hustle. In. My first. Are we being hustle. honest on the podcast? Oh yeah, yeah. No, we're never honest on the podcast. <laughs> but I'll tell you a little bit about my first hustle. So, I'm walking down the street. It's it's a it's a it's actually wonderful weather. By the way, don't go to Greece in the summer. Forget that. It's, it's so you, hot. Yeah. Like go now and so May. January, February, March, April, it's May. May. Okay, thank you. Friday. I, I, I gotta it's remember. It's May currently, but not when you're listening to this. My wife's birthday. Okay, when, so. When is your wife's birthday? I'll put you on the spot. May 3rd, <laughs> May 3rd, May 3rd, <laughs> April 3rd. Damn it. <laughs> Don't ask me about children's birth dates, all right? I only know one of them. So um, <laughs> I'm walking down the street, and this nice elderly gentleman comes up to me and strikes up a conversation, and, and I'm like, yeah, cool. And he, he, uh, you know, he asked me if I'd like a cup of coffee because he's got a coffee shop down around the corner. I'm like, ah, no, I'm not doing caffeine. I appreciate it though. He goes, well, have you ever had grappa? I'm like, uh, grappa. No. Gra Italian grappa. Everclear. grappa. Yeah, so I'm like, no, I haven't had it. So he's like, come on, come on. I'll, I'll, you have to try it, right? It's our national drink. I'm like, I okay, would. fine. I would. Yeah. So I follow him and we go, it's really not that far. It's just one block one block down and one block over off the main pedestrian drag touristy area uh -huh. sir. yeah yeah i guess it would be we're like you're we're, in athens correct i'm in athens yeah and i'm we're within view of of uh parth of um acropolis acropolis thank you i don't speak greek so it's all greek to me <laughs> um so he takes me into this place and i'm like this is a dive bar right it's dark there's only a bar and a couple of of benches and stuff like that and there's a dj station in the corner with lights going around but there's only like three really large cranky old greeks uh there and uh as soon as i sit down this girl that's sitting in a in one of the booths who has no drink or anything comes out and sits right next to me the bartender comes over also a girl and uh, the guy says, yeah, get this guy some grappa. I'm like, you want it with orange juice? I'm like, I'll have it however you think I should, right? right. So this is my first thing, like, this is, this is not a coffee shop, right? Clearly. In about three minutes, the guy disappears. So now I'm just surrounded, not surrounded, I've just got these two girls next to me a little uncomfortably close. <laughs> invading your personal yeah, space. Yeah, kind of invading my personal space. <laughs> and... Talking to me about random stuff, like, <laughs> I don't even know who you people are, right? Right, what do you want? Uh, during this conversation, I'm about halfway done with my drink. Some guy comes in from a back door in which didn't look like there was a door there. Anyhow, because it was just black back there, hands this guy three envelopes, really fat, and there's I can see there's cash in there. I'm like, huh, this is not a coffee shop. Right. I'm being in personal space invaded by two girls Maybe i'm in the wrong location yeah exactly so i say hey you know what let me get the check i'm gonna i'll get this guy's drink Excellent. right so oh I, I forgot to tell you so these the both girls are drinking too right they both get drinks so Never the drinks. bartender and her and uh and 
one of them asked me, can I have another? I'm like, well, you, you can do whatever you want. I mean, <laughs> whatever. whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I asked for the bill. I get a bill for 180 euro, right? For one eight what? zero. How many drinks yeah. did you have? I had one drink, right? And oh, so dirty. I'm thinking it's 18 euro for two drinks. And I'm like, no, it's 180. I'm like, wow. no, there's something wrong here. Wow. This is. You got played. Yeah, exactly. So. I'm like, I don't have the, the cash to cover this. And I know, I know they don't take American Express, right? Like, you take American Express? <laughs> like, no. Like, okay, well, we're going to have to work something out then. Because first of all, I'm not paying this much money. And I don't, I don't have it. So, so you wash dishes in the back. No, so no. Th now this <laughs> other guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it could be worse. That's right. It could be worse. So, no, and, and luckily one of my legs is titanium, so I would have told him, like, break this one, break this one. Ha <laughs> suckers, I'm out of here. Uh, so uh, this the guy that brought me in, gone, disappeared, right? So I obviously have put three and three together, and I know that spells 33. And so the guy goes, hey, there's an ATM right around the corner. So I'm like, all right, cool. I know I'm going to use my Amex. I'm not using my debit That's card, right. right? And I'm like, no, oh, no, it doesn't work. See? And he's like, well, come on. There's a bank down here. And luckily, it's further down the road. So I think to myself, okay, fine. I know it's not going to work there. That's right. So we'll go down there, and it gives me an opportunity to be a little further away, mm -hmm. right? So I go, nope, sorry. It's not working. So I, I take out my wallet, and I give him what I thought was 25 euro. <laughs> and I'm like, here you go. That's what you get. He's like, well, how much is it? I'm like, doesn't matter. That's all you right, get. See I you have. later. And I, I, I go up the street, right? So turns out it was 70 euro and I thought oh. I'd give him a, a 20 and a five and I, the five was anyhow. So well, still better than the I, previous check. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Still, still less than that. I got 50% <laughs> right. off. That's guys. 50 <laughs> off. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm walking down the main drag where all the people are. And then I hear the guy yell from we're one block over now. He's oh, clearly seen that there's only 70 euro there and, and not 180 or 150 or whatever. So he starts following me. So I'm, you know, I'm tall, I can walk quickly and I can dodge people and pedestrians and stuff like that. So I go not towards my hotel. Naturally. I go back right. towards uh, Acropolis. And then knowing he's following me, I position myself as it's nighttime at this point, right? I position myself where there's, I'm backlit. And I come straight around the corner as he's passing me. Oh, sly. Yeah. I like it. And then I go back down and I go down an empty, empty uh, alleyway so I can be dead certain I'm not being followed. And then I go back to my hotel. <laughs> All the while I'm texting my wife like, I'm okay. This is what is happening. <laughs> if you if, can't, if I don't yeah. text you in 10 minutes, call exactly. the police. If my phone moves, set a reminder. If my phone moves, it's not me. <laughs> I'm being taken. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, yeah. So uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a real thing, you know. Welcome but, back. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, welcome yeah. back. Safe so it's like, I'm Safe changing lady. my flight and I'm calling the embassy. And <laughs> I think I called you. Well, I, actually, I know I called you when I was in New York and you were still in Greece, right? That's right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't even remember what we talked about. I got so little Wasn't sleep. That. Yeah. No. <laughs> Must have been before then, huh? Uh, anyhow. So uh, here we are. That, that's Yeah, that's how, that's how we met. It's and, been our and, last month. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So... It, <laughs> Out of the last four weekends, only one of them have we not spent, spent together at some sort of thing. Obviously, you called me while I was in Athens. We were having withdrawals. Of course. Right. Uh, Naturally. So, yeah. So how did, <laughs> how did you guys meet? That's what I want to know. And, and, how, and what, how did it lead to Rivley? Uh, and quick spoiler alert, these guys are e-commerce and Amazon sellers. So how did it lead to Rivley and what let's do that first and then we'll talk about what is Rivley and 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 what does it solve for me let me go yeah please so uh, interestingly and I guess interestingly just like everyone else that gets an e-commerce there's no degree that you go and get that says hey I got my e-commerce PhD so everyone comes from a different background you know so my background is as a, an emergency physician an ER doctor uh, I've been doing it since 20... I finally acquired a doctor friend. <laughs> <laughs> to write the prescriptions that you need. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I didn't even think about that. I was thinking well, about the broken that, bone stuff. That's usually how everybody talks to me. <laughs> yeah. for, they need for prescriptions. <laughs> the uh, uh, Basically, what we did were... 
Well, at that time, uh, I working as much many shifts as I could. Yeah. ER is a, is a great job working shifts in the emergency department. It's very it's very gratifying. Yeah. Um, it's very tense, and I just love that type of atmosphere and, and thrive in the atmosphere. Yep. Uh, we started a uh, myself and uh, not Josh, but a, a best friend of mine started a clothing business in 2014. Mm. We always wanted to get into business. This was our first foray into the the business world, other than our full time jobs. And the fact that you went into clothing is absolutely insane yeah. to me. Yeah. So that <laughs> we were we were grappling over what we should go into yeah. and uh, we had an idea that sure maybe people want to wear a, uh, a a nice comfortable collared shirt underneath the sweater but it's so annoying to have a bunchy collared shirt like a button down shirt under a sweater so why can't we just make like an Under Armour tight piece underneath and then just put the cotton collar and cuffs on there so when you wear under a sweater it's very seamless it's cool it doesn't bag it's not baggy people wear and, collared shirts under sweaters yeah some people not as not as many as we wanted actually because it didn't sell. For <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> so I mean, the, we live in Florida. The so. point being said, and what Amazon sellers may already know, it we learned at that is that when people go to Amazon, you're putting something in a search bar. You are looking for something in particular, yeah. and you want to check out. Yeah, it's not a great place for brand discovery, which is something we're trying to to fix on our new platform. Yep. One of the one of the other things we're touching on, but. Uh, that didn't sell. However, uh, with just basic cell phone pictures and nothing else back in 2014, with sweaters and other items, we were able to sell very well. And uh, as time went on with very little effort, we just capitalized on the e-commerce tailwind and the business was growing and growing and growing mm -hmm. until the point where it became, you know, hey, maybe, you know, if we didn't focus on our full-time jobs as much that we could you know, put some more time into this and actually would do really well. Mm. And it was around 2017, I guess, Josh, 18. we met, that's right? Yeah, 17. Met it for our met. dealership. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, met it for our dealership. Um, I know, Josh, you want to touch on what? Yeah, that was my yeah, background. Our, yes. My background's always been in sales. Mm -hmm. um, I had moved down to Florida around 2014, 2015, took a job at Ferrari Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. um, Daniel and his lovely wife walked in. Um, we're looking at cars one day. Um, actually never sold him a car. Yeah, sorry, um, I went behind his even back, had actually. Bought one, so that shows <laughs> the from salesman. California. So, that I am, yeah. But he left a great impression on me, uh -huh. and that's why we became business partners. Yeah, so, we, sorry, we continue. reconnected <laughs> later later on, um, um, entertained the idea of some projects um, yeah. in, in real estate. Um, Daniel wanted to do a car dealership at one point yeah. in time. I told him he was crazy. Yeah, Just thank you. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. talking me out of that. I appreciate it. Yeah, I've, I've done, I've done uh, car sales before myself where I went to auction, bought cars, fixed really? them up, and sold them. At the end of nine cars, I'd made $56 or something <sighs> like that. And the time and everything. Yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, yeah. So we, we entertained like, a done. car condo idea. Um, they're actually building one in Tampa now. They've got one in Naples, different people. Um, yeah, they're, like they're all over the country. Kind of yeah. like those... Uh, uh, it's a mezzanine with, uh, you know, that you can build mezzanine, out. You're that, Italian, I can tell. Yeah, yeah <laughs> grappa. Yeah. <laughs> They're like man, man caves. There so, are a bunch yeah. of garages that men can use, to, or and, and women too, yeah, just yeah. De decorate out and uh, the becomes like club. a nice yeah, ah. community, a nice social club. And then the one in Tampa is great because we all have, a, all have a track. So but, we were talked out oh. of that. Um, and <laughs> then Daniel and I were talking about um, e-commerce and mm -hmm. what he had been doing uh, with Dan, his friend and right. business partner, other the other founder of River. So we have Daniel, Dan, we have Dan. And Josh. And Josh. Josh. Okay. They uh, they had this clothing company, and um, I mean, that was you were moonlighting that, right? Yeah, I yeah. Mean, it was it, doing it was doing well. Uh, it really needed some extra attention, and uh, Josh, I think your know, entrepreneur itch started to get bigger. Correct, correct. And you had had success in your Skycare Global company, which we haven't That's talked right. about yet. That's and right. And then yeah. this lended itself to a partnership to where we could both jump in, both quit our full time jobs, and That's really. Right start to do masterminds and, and teach ourselves PPC and, and learn as much as you know, possible to become an e-commerce entrepreneur these days. There's not really anywhere you can go besides online and, and just to absorb the knowledge any way that you can find it. And mm -hmm. I think with our temperaments and our skill sets, so they speak to the opposite of each other and we were always on go. We always found solutions and, and that, that, righted the ship of the clothing business and we really figured out how to deal with a complex multi-skew uh, yeah. source from another country and tons of the, variability and did the total opposite and then decided <laughs> yeah. to go with a very lean u.s source supplement company right. i was gonna say 2014 you should have started with silicone seriously. baking mats <laughs> seriously 2014 i know in, in retrospect and well that's one of the great pitches for rivley i guess is that well, everything you know, happens for a reason yeah right? exactly yeah. this is a new marketplace starting starting fresh but anyways to so i was gonna say progress. everything that we um, 
failed at or something that we learned. Didn't like. It was too. It was complex. Things that we learned that we we added that yeah. to the gummies. That's right. Yeah. And then we by the way, that. this is this is just for reference. This is brand number two, which is uh, uh, vitamin gummies. Right. Right. Which right. we started in 2019 together with the idea of, of taking it from seed to sale in mm -hmm. three years or less, and actually, did thankfully, did the 18 months. Yeah. 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 Um, all the while taking everything that we always building something bigger and better trying to find a new solution what's next yep and that's when daniel decided to start building and working on all the holes that we found in e-commerce that mm -hmm. we liked um mm -hmm. to build rivoli um to cool. support u.s based businesses all right let's let's go down that path real quick okay so rivoli was built to support united states of america companies that's right that's correct okay now i am uh you know, that actually brings up something that I that I had forgotten was an option on Amazon. There was an option, once upon a time, drop-down option of United States only, where you could choose U.S. businesses, that, and those were the only, um, uh, there was a filter for products. So you could choose U.S. only sellers, and they took that away. It was quite a few years ago, probably four or five years ago now. But uh, probably so, as their demographic yes. shifted a little bit. It probably then, uh, was uh, less than impressive too. Once you go from a catalog of you know X to X right. minus. Yeah. Well, they do things for their own reasons. That's for sure. Do a lot and, of things. Right. A lot when of we say right. U.S. based businesses, we don't mean U.S. products. I mean these products okay. can be sourced from Greece, from China, from Vietnam, from Mexico, from from Israel, from anywhere. Can, as long as the business is established in the United States. The, they have in the IN US, number. Uh, that's right. Yeah. US, a US owner. You know, we, we yep. customers are the shoppers that we talk to. They they want a place they can go and shop and shop American businesses and American products if they want to. We can with we can US have the filter service, if they too. want to. Exactly. With mm. US customer service. And they want to have a, a better connection with the brands. Mm. And we try to enable all those things. We couldn't populate a marketplace uh, with enough enough products nowadays that given that we've outsourced 30 or 40 years of of manufacturing overseas you know of course that's our goal in the, in the future to help promote those who do reshore their manufacturing yeah so you'll have a filter right yeah mm -hmm. so we'll have a made in usa filter for the the shoppers that care the most about that and are, and are willing to to go in that route and then we also have uh, assembled in usa and then uh, we just you know we try to try to build features as they're requesting them and what's most important to them yeah, yeah. And to your point, you know, we can't go back on 30, 40 years of manufacturing, but what right. we can do is we can aggregate a, a, a group of businesses and products for the U.S. population to go and know that they're shopping and supporting businesses that exactly. are based out of the U.S., yeah. regardless of where they're sourced. That's right. Yeah. Employing U.S. citizens, paying U.S. taxes. I Putting mean, money if, back into the economy. That's yeah. right. Even supporting if you're buying, mom and pops. Correct. Yep. Even if so, what maybe 100% of your dollar is not going into their pocket, but at least 80% is going in their dollar, whereas you know, a lot of the bigger platforms out there nowadays are kind of going in the other direction where the majority of the new sellers signing up on the, on the major platforms today are you know, based overseas, yeah. probably based I, in China. I, I, I don't mind uh, supporting other countries and, and families as well. Like, as far as I'm concerned, Earth is still made up of humans, you know. Absolutely. And, and but that being said, of course, I I want to support my like. It's how it's concentric circles, right? right? My my family, my extended family, mm -hmm. my community, right? My church, my my city, and so on and Correct. so forth. So of course, I want to support my country and my fellow countrymen, but I also don't mind supporting others. Of course. That being said. Uh, there is a certain country that is communist in nature that, you know, the government has their hands in everything. That I don't like supporting. Right. You know what I mean? And currently, that's the only country I've been able to find to get my blankets done. And and I am I am this close to just retiring the brand for that, for the blankets, because of that. I'm, I'm, I have no interest in going back it's, there. It's hard to quantify value on them certain platforms right like it's it's we talk about pictures price and reviews mm -hmm. and you know in our clothing <laughs> brand we can source and a b and c test and test fit and quality but how do you quantify that when you have 2000 reviews i have 2000 reviews your shirt's 15 dollars and ours is 30 mm -hmm. ours is worth 60 and yours is worth five mm -hmm. you know i mean there's no yeah, there's values no, it's tough yeah. with value absolutely but then there also is a value for customer service as well I mean, we. Where's your customer service based? 
U.S. Well, okay. well, I was going to segue US, into the uh, the algorithm of you know perceived value. You know. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. We, and there's just not there's not that on there's a lot not, of platforms. That's right. And we're trying to how, provide more value. How? What's that? How how are you how are you doing that? Like, let's. I mean, let's take reviews for instance. Usually, people go to reviews to yeah. determine value, right? Right. And they're and they're going to look at the one stars and the low star, or the low rated and the high rated to find out. Okay, in what's my opinion based on those things? Right. So, and of course, and and this this comes from a time when we started on e-commerce. There were a buttload of fake reviews, mm -hmm. right? That's How right. are you going to combat that? So we. We have a system where we identity verify the reviewers. Okay. Uh, the reviewers, when they are the shoppers, when they want to leave reviews before they leave their first review on the platform, they have to put in some basic information that we run through a third party verification service that wow. verifies their identity. Now, the incentive for customers to do this is that when they are now on the platform and they leave reviews, we also have a blockchain based review reward system where portions of the sales. Uh, are given to these creators who put in a lot of time and effort to create helpful reviews. Wow. And we're trying to incentivize that behavior uh, to create great reviews. The top reviews will share in some sales as well as the top category reviews as, as a whole. And we're trying to build this community aspect where people want to take extra time, want to give great reviews. And you know, to do that, we've identity verify helps helps us provide the consumer with the the confidence that these these are pot products and they're not from uh, you know twenty five cell phones attached in a warehouse somewhere. I can be honest with you, I was not expecting that answer. That sounds like a pretty good solution <laughs> yeah, to yeah. me. And we're trying to eliminate this cold <clears throat> transactional experience of online. You know, mm. with our with our brands on on Rivoli, you're able to set store hours to where you know Danon can say I'm available from nine to five. Contact me and let's talk about my blankets and, wow. and why you love them or right. hate them. But we want to share the customer. Wow. It's more of a shared uh, shared customer experience mm -hmm. versus you know Rivoli owning the customer and shutting out the seller. And we yeah. will be br taking your data and, and and branding our own products to sell against you and no Rivoli essentials. No, no not <laughs> one. No. no, it's not. No, we, it was, it was that one, I would say is the, uh, right behind the U S based, uh, mission that was yeah. number two. And that, yep. uh, you know, when we compiled, uh, feedback from, from tons of sellers, us included, you know, that was, that was second on the list. They just really branded product competition, something that just can't, can't happen. Among the other features we, we, we have built, to uh, address many other issues that, you know, you, you would, would have found. Yeah. I, I definitely spoken to some sellers where Amazon Essentials has just ruined it's tough. their business. It's tough. And, and I myself, when I went into uh, uh, supplements in the UK, I started off selling a brand that was sold by Amazon. And when I put the brand up, I started making sales because I, of course, can build a better listing than Amazon can. Right. And what they did is they chopped their price and took the buy box. They chopped their price to below what they could get it for. Just to purely take the operating buy box. a loss, just to run you out, yeah. just to cannibalize you. It's yeah. tough. You can't compete with deep pockets like that. It yeah, makes, it makes things difficult. Mm -hmm. I, I thought I was being sneaky and and getting in on a product that I knew was selling well. Right. Right. Because I knew the owners but of this company. But they have the same data that the product sells well. Of course. Right. Well, mm -hmm. of course they do. But I didn't expect them to shut out. I mean, it was slightly a test, but I didn't expect them to 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 operate at such a vicious loss mm -hmm. just to push right. me out, you know? Right. And I was, I was very surprised by the like, I'd be curious to see where that product is now. There's, you know what I mean? Like the price, the reviews, the placement, all that, yeah. like, is it back to after Dane's right. gone? You know? Well, it's tough. You can't, you no, can't fault know. them for their, their strategy. It's very smart. And just That's like uh, CVS and Kroger and everybody comes out with their own branded mm -hmm. uh, generics, the same, same concept. We just, yeah. You know, recognizing that while that may be lost revenue and income for us down the road by not adopting that business model, you know, we're, we're really focused on trying to give the sellers the experience they want. And, and we realize the shoppers need a great experience as well. We just, we're trying to find a, a happy medium between the two mm -hmm. of them rather than just skew too far in one direction. And that's why we're in this interim period right now of onboarding seven, eight, and nine figure sellers that we right. personally private met. Beta right now. Oh yeah, that. so you're in, you're in private beta right we're now, right? beta right, right. now, So correct. say we meet a seller, we're very impressed with them, you know, what they've accomplished and, and maybe they're in a category that we haven't uploaded yet. So we, you know, find Ooh. time to sit with them and figure out their wants and needs to okay. make, you know, make this experience better for them because we really do want this to be a seller run, seller built, uh, everything. I mean, everything is about the consumer, right? Yeah. And we want that to 
can remain the same. But yeah, it, and, and Amazon feels that way too, but at the expense of the seller like us. Like I've never had such to bad be that way. I totally agree. I think I think that if you create a, a good, honest ecosystem for the sellers to operate in, then that intrinsically offers a better experience for, That's right, for the, the shopper, shopper. Especially when the shopper is being rewarded through our reward system of right. good, honest reviews. Yeah, right. cool, cool. So uh, let's say... I'm a seller, and I may or may not have impressed you, but uh, I, I'm interested in selling on, uh, on on Rivley, right? I'm an Amazon seller. I've got all my inventory there. I'm 100% FBA. Uh, what do I do? Let's let's assume we're through the beta, and, and sure. you're an, or or you're an open sure. beta, right? Yeah, but actually, yeah, by the time everyone's listening to this, I'm assuming I mean we'll be right. open signups. People right, just right. go and sign up. So excellent. All right, if good. you do so, want to go and sign up sell.rivley.com s-e-l-l.rivley.com um, if you're interested in talking to somebody or have some great ideas we need as much feedback as possible sell at rivley.com is the email address to, to contact us cool uh, and you're always just talking to people that have great ideas and at this stage the, the great thing Dane is that we can you know, we can implement changes very quickly and yeah. very easily. If someone mm -hmm. has a great idea, we just put it on the roadmap and yep. do it. You want to get a hold of somebody, you just call us and talk to us. And there's so many sellers with so many great ideas. So oh, many I'm great sure. ideas. I know. We have, a, you know, we have a huge list running. We have our roadmap's already two years out right now, planned out. Yep. Wow. But, uh, yeah, so sorry, back to your question. So if you were going to, yeah. if what you were ask? interested, you, <laughs> how would you how would you come over? Or oh, yeah, yeah. Early? Uh, if you're a Amazon seller and your products are F in Amazon Warehouse, FBA, yeah. uh, we have um, onboarding is simple. It's pretty easy. It takes about five or 10 minutes, general basic information, uh, U.S. business, U.S. business EIN, no individual sellers or social security numbers, uh, you know, just U.S. businesses only. Mm -hmm. And uh, U.S. owner with social security number and birthday, we do identity verification. Once you get into your account, uh, with a U.S. bank account, of course, once you get into your account, uh, the first step that you do is go to our Amazon integrator mm. and you integrate your Amazon account in a few clicks and then we can have the option to import all of your products over, categorize and sort them for you, slot all the variations together and that's it. When we'll wow, notify you when it's done. Uh, whether you have a you know one product or twenty thousand products, wow. it just runs and imports. Wow, and we can that's awesome. Obviously, you have twenty thousand products. It can take a full day to for the importer to go. But okay. nonetheless, you know it's there's there's no rush. We'll bring everything over. You pop in, look at all of your listings, make sure everything's good to go, and that's it. You're set. You're ready to get sales. Fulfillable, returnable. Everything. That's right. Just oh, if you, if you import from Amazon, it's set to be fulfilled by Amazon. Wow. If it is, if it's FBM, it'll you know slot, slot to be fulfilled by seller. And uh, returns let's, also go back to Amazon yeah, Warehouse. QR code, okay. box up. Back so, to so let's let's take a um, Shopify for instance, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. You create a Shopify store. You have to create the listing. That's right. Right, and then tell it which product to fulfill from Amazon. So that if you've got twenty thousand products, you need to hire people to to create your Shopify. So what you're telling me is that with the boop and the beep of a few buttons, yep. it'll be done mm -hmm. for me. That's Absolutely. right, and shoppable. And yep. shoppable. And all set to be fulfilled by Amazon and returned to Amazon warehouses. Okay. All right. So let's say so I've got- So there's no risk. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Let's say I've got a 3PL, right? I I do have, I do keep inventory at Amazon, but I'm I'm assuming that my sales are going to be double Amazon sales with Rivley.com. <laughs> On the right? first day. On the You're first right. day. Of course, of yeah. course. Um, Disclaimer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> this is right. We it's, This will be slow growing comparatively. We know everybody out there has 95 plus percent of their sales comes from Amazon. Yeah. So I mean, we, even our FBA we, or even yeah. our private label businesses. We in. will make a dent. We will yeah. make a dent that's worth worth the time. It's just, just going to take some time to do Just because there's a growing portion of the population that cares about shopping and supporting that's U.S. Right. based businesses, and yep. that number is going to continue to grow. Yep. Right, like as every year. But. All right. So three PLs. Three PLs. Right. So I have I have inventory at FBA, but my three PL is less expensive. Can can you accommodate me? Yeah. So Absolutely. we have, yep. We have okay. a, um, we plan at least right now the having our own warehouses is on our radar potentially in the future. Really? But, okay. Potentially. But as for now, we plan on being a lean tech focused company. 
Do you also plan on having your own airplanes? Planes, trains, and automobiles? Probably not. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, no, no. The, we can't. We we realize that to compete against uh, Amazon, spending ten billion dollars a year for their their logistics, and you know, Shopify just recently bought Deliver yep. in the news, and mm-hmm. and Walmart's expanding their WFS. Yep. You know, they're all going to chase delivery within one hour, and we are going to just integrate with the best pr- uh, third party logistics companies and providers that are out there, and kind of kind of be a uh, okay. More of an integrator as opposed to trying to, you know, chase billions of dollars in one direction. Because let's face it, if you're set up to fulfill an item to your customer, whoever that is, Mm -hmm. and you do it well, Mm -hmm. why should you be penalized by not having it in a certain warehouse? That's right. Should be based on your customer service scores, how fast you, you know, get the item there or back, you know. Yeah, that's right. A free, a free market. To, yeah, absolutely. And right. when you, if you come on the platform, we have a section there for requesting uh, certain features and requesting an integration specifically. People yeah. vote on the integration requests and like the next ones that are most that's popular. Right. Oh, like, nice. would you like this 3PL or this? That's right. Yeah. And our developers are always working on the ones that are the most popular. Fantastic. All right, let's take another scenario. Right. We'll take a real life scenario that I have right now. Okay, and you can tell me. <laughs> I can't tell if he's telling the truth or not. Problem says solving that. with Dana. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a brand, right? I sell camping blankets. Okay. All right. And I want I want brand registry so that I can control my brand, right? So I go out and I accidentally spend 13 months doing it by myself instead of just paying Amazon for it, right? So this is a true story f- telling it for a friend I know. <laughs> All right. So uh so this friend of mine Really smart guy, but he did this. Good looking, too. Good looking, (laughs) yes. Oh my gosh, dreamy eyes. Best you've ever seen. I've never seen. Best I've ever seen, I mean. In the mirror. In the mirror. (laughs) Anyhow, so I can't get brand registry, right? So I've been denied four times. This friend of mine has been (laughs) denied four times. The only reason is is that I've broken terms of service. There's no record of me breaking terms of service. I've never broken terms of service. And there's no one to contact. So obviously I have no actual control of my brand, right? How are you going to help sellers? Like this is my brand, right? I, I, I came up with the logo with a friend of mine. It's custom, everything that it's a blanket, like it's okay. It's but a different blanket. size square, right? Yeah, but it's right. mine, right? right? So, um, I own it all lock stock and two smoking barrels, right? How, are, how, how am I going to control my brand on Rivley? So we, on Rivley, we try to give the brand- Oh, shit. Sorry, the camera just died. Oh. Hold on, folks. (laughs) Audio still up? Yeah, the audio's still up. Great. All right, well, answer the question. Yeah, go ahead and answer. So on on Rivley, we- uh, we took a lot of these opinions into consideration, and we're really trying to give the brand owner more exclusive control over how their listing is seen on our platform. And by doing that, for example, if you come over, we have our own similar program where if you p- apply, register your brand with your trademark, mm-hmm. then you get control over all the listings that have your brand. In addition to that, when from that point forward, when people submit applications to want to sell your brand, maybe they have an invoice or they're saying they're an authorized uh, reseller for yeah. this. That application goes to the brand. It does not go to us. It go to the owner. Oh, wow. So everybody that comes on and sells a brand up to a point, or up to the registered brand owner coming on, that's all, I guess, fair game, so mm-hmm. to say. They can sell the brand. Unless yeah. it's a restricted brand, then they have to apply. The application goes to Rivley, and we approve it. But the second we have that brand owner on there, they control all their listings, and every application goes to them for approval. Okay, so uh, let's say somebody's price gouging. A pr- I come on at a later point. There's ten sellers. Two yep. of them are price gouging, mm-hmm. right? Or below map. Yeah. Uh, many manufacturer. Uh, minimum advertised min- minimum price. Minimum advertised price, right? So how do I, as a brand owner, handle those guys because I don't want them selling? Good point. So, as a registered brand owner, you have the option to set a map if you want to. Okay. So we have uh, on certain plans, you have the ability to set a map where prices cannot go below a certain amount mm. or or you know, or the listing will like, I guess similar listing would be suppressed, I guess, as they would say. Oh, yeah. Uh, and th- the reason that we do that is we've, you know, we've really tried to think 
uh, and talk to a lot of brand owners, even small brands, even even big name brands that we've talked to. Yeah. And especially with big name brands, that's one of their pain points with selling on some marketplaces is that the the maps aren't being adhered to. Mm-hmm. And it's just yeah. another opportunity for us. And again, it's just, I guess, in, in full circle, we've mentioned before, in building this is just about taking lots of feedback from how people would change things. And yeah. sometimes when you've gone too far down a certain path, it's hard to make changes. And we have the opportunity to make those changes from scratch. So again, cool. if, if anyone out here to listen in has ideas on what they would want in a new marketplace, we want to hear about it. If only yeah, people absolutely. listen to the podcast. Yeah, yeah if, if, <laughs> if you've made it this far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. All right, so I'd say, what, what are we at? How are we on time? We are... 40 minutes. 40 that? minutes. That went by very fast. Wow. I can't believe that we actually. Time yeah, flies. Time flies. All right. Well, it's probably a good time to wrap, wrap it up. up. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. So I'm a seller. How do I get onto Rivley? Sell.rivley.com. It's for information on the site. If you're a shopper, you can go to Rivley.com and uh, you can scroll to the bottom. Obviously, there's information on selling, but uh, you can sign up. By the time this thing airs, uh, it'll be or it'll be open beta or even public launch if we can uh, move yeah. fast enough. Yeah. But we know how the development world, double world goes. Yeah. So uh, in six weeks, we'll be 12 weeks away from saying what we <laughs> right, do in three right, weeks. Right. <laughs> right. But sell.rivley.com or again, sell at Rivley.com if you want to just talk to us, mm-hmm. set yeah. a meeting. You know, we want to hear from you. Cool. Yeah, you can email us personally. You can reach us to us on our Instagram. Right. Um, we're we're very accessible, right. and we can um, and we plan LinkedIn's. to be that way. Yeah. You know, through the selling experience, when things happen, you know, get a hold of us. We'll you know we can fix things. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. So let me let me uh, end this off with, Rivley.com is going to be a U.S. business. Uh, a marketplace for U.S. businesses. They have a uh, product importer. There's no Rivley branded products, so right. no Rivley essentials right. to ruin your brand in life. <laughs> there's currently no advertising on there. That's right. We there's, talk about that. Yeah, there's U.S. based support, which is something that I know right. some of you older sellers were accustomed to. 3PL integrations uh, and brand gating, and I'm sure there's going to be quite a bit yeah, more a few verified other, reviews. A few other stuff. Verified reviews, yeah, we didn't cover we didn't that. We that as a shopper on the shopper side, but yeah. it's, it's all about uh, trying to build a good community on both sides. And yeah. we, I know we focus more on the sellers. That's I probably listen to this podcast, but if you're interested, you know, Rivley.com, we have information on the shoppers as well and how we're trying to revolutionize their shopping experience as well. Yeah. And oh, this, this isn't from a, an ER doctor and a, and a car salesman in a past life. I mean, it is, but it's also from two people that have lived this private label e-commerce life for yep. years now. And, you know, I think that we've really found the holes that the majority of our ecosystem once solved. So. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you guys for, first of all, creating Rivley. I'm, I'm really looking forward to being a part of that. Uh, and, and thanks for coming on the podcast. It was great having you well, thanks, thanks for having yeah, us. Thanks for having us. Great. Absolutely. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Cool. cool. See ya. Thank See ya. you for listening, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Take care, everyone.